If you want to work in the cloud or you want to work in cybersecurity, you need to understand cloud vulnerabilities. And a new one was discovered this week. So let's break it down in a way that actually makes sense. Now, there's a few high level concepts we need to cover before we dig into the fun part. And I know it can be a bit frustrating when you're just starting out, but trust me, this is what separates the average from the greater part, understanding these high level technical domains. The first one is AWS AMI, basically a pre-configured virtual machine that's used to launch instances or EC2s in AWS. What goes into it? Well, it's root volume, run, launch permissions, block device mapping, basically the OS software and configurations go in to make up an AMI and that makes you cloud instances. There are three types. We're going to go over this blazingly quickly. AWS provided ones, marketplace ones, and custom ones, ones that me and you could make. So why do businesses do this? Well, they do it for consistency, scalability, and backup. Second thing we need to understand is the AWS CLI. This is basically a way for us to programmatically interact with our AWS cloud estate without using the UI. So we could do things like AWS S3 LS, and that's gonna list all of our S3 buckets. The third and last thing we need to understand before we get to the fun part, trust me, it is worth it, is Terraform. Terraform is what's known as an IEC tool, stands for infrastructure as code, and it's a way for us basically to version control our infrastructure. We write Terraform in what's called HCL, it's a really, really, really great tool. I recommend that you look into it if you are interested in getting into the cloud. Okay, here is where it gets really juicy. The hacker is gonna create their own AMI. Remember, perfectly legal to do so. Inside it, they're gonna put a command and control binary. What's this? It's basically a malicious file that starts up when you start your instance and calls back to their machine, giving them complete control. But we're not gonna use that AMI, right? Because it's obviously malicious. Well, they share this AMI and they make it public. We, as engineers, our first week in the job, we've been tasked to create our own cloud instance using Ubuntu. And because we're good engineers, we're gonna use infrastructure as code or Terraform to do so. So we set a filter on our Terraform and we say, this is the name of the AMI that I want to pull down. And we want the mo latest version because that's gonna have all the security patches. So we set a flag, most recent equals true. And that's a Boolean value. So this is where it gets interesting. The hacker has already uploaded an AMI with the exact same name. So we're actually pulling down the malicious one because the Terraform will go and grab the latest version because we've set in the code here, say most recent version equals true. And they've created the same name AMI as the Ubuntu official image. So that's the one we're pulling. When we launch it, the hacker gets a remote code execution because they've received a new connection from our EC2, giving them the ability to execute arbitrary commands, use it as a pivot point or launch ransomware. If you want a complete breakdown of this in a way that actually makes sense and most importantly, how to prevent it, because that's why you're being employed and that's what's going to impress the employers, how to actually prevent these type of vulnerabilities, check out CyberNotes. The link's in my bio. It's my weekly newsletter and this article is going to take you all through that.